clouds, a strange and lovely sound. I hear it in the thunder and the rain. It's ringing in the skies like cannons in the night. The music of the universe plays. We're singing, You are holy, great and mighty. The moon and the stars declare who you are. I'm so unworthy, still you love me forever. My heart will sing of how great. Song of galaxies, it's reaching far beyond Milky Way. Let's join in with the sound. Come on, let's sing it out as the music of the universe plays. We're singing, You are holy, great and mighty, the moon and the stars. Declare who you are. I'm so unworthy. Still you love me forever. My heart will sing of you. All glory, all the power is yours. Amen. All glory, all the power is yours. Amen. All glory. stars declare who you are I'm so unworthy still you love me forever my heart will sing of you we're singing you are holy great and mighty the moon and the stars declare who you are I'm so unworthy, still you love me forever, my heart will sing of how great you are. How great you are. Sing this out. Water you turned into wine. Open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. None like you. Into the darkness you shine. Out of the ashes we rise There's no one like you None like you Our God is greater Our God is stronger God, you are higher than any other Our God is healer Awesome in power, our God, our God. 
into the darkness you shine out of the ashes we rise there's no one like you there's none like you our god is greater our god is stronger god you are higher than any other our god is healer awesome and power our god our god our god is greater our god is stronger god you are higher than any other our god is healer awesome and power our god our god And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? Then what could stand against? Our God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other, our God is healer, awesome and power, our God, our God, our God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome and power, our God, our God. And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what could stand again Little one could stand again Amen. At this time, I'd like to call the ushers forward to receive this morning's offering. This dry and desert land, I tell myself, keep walking on. There's something up ahead, water falling like a song. An everlasting stream, your river carries me home. Let it flow, let it flow. Hold my fountains A flood for my soul A well that never will run dry I've rambled on my own Never believing I would find 
An everlasting stream Your river carries me home Let it flow, let it flow Open the heavens Come living water All my fountains Are in you You're strong like a river Your love It's running through All my fountains Come on and rain down on us, rain down on us, Lord. You can stand with us. Come on and rain down on us, rain down on us, Lord. Come on and rain down on us, rain down on us, Lord. Come on and rain down on us, rain down on us, Lord. Open the heavens, come living water on my fountains are in you. You're strong like a river, your love, it's running through all my fountains, all in you. Sing this out. Open the heavens, come living water. All my fountains are in you. You're strong like a river. Your love is running through all my fountains. Are in All my fountains are in you. All my fountains are in you. may be seated. We hear now the word of God from Genesis 29, 15 through 28. Then Laban said to Jacob, because you are my kinsman, should you therefore serve me for nothing? Tell me what shall your wages be? Now Laban had two daughters. The name of the elder was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. Leah's eyes were lovely, and Rachel was graceful and beautiful. Jacob loved Rachel, so he said, I will serve you seven years for your younger daughter, Rachel. Laban said, It is better that I give her to you than that I should give her to any other men. Stay with me. So Jacob served seven years for Rachel, and they seemed to him but a few days because of the love he had for her. Then Jacob said to Laban, Give me my wife that I may go into her, for my time is completed. So Laban gathered together all the people of the place and made a feast. But in the evening he took his daughter Leah and brought her to Jacob. Then he went into her. Laban gave his maid Zilpah to his daughter Leah to be her maid. When morning came, it was Leah. And Jacob said to Laban, What is this you have done to me? Did I not serve you for Rachel? Why then have you deceived me? Laban said, This is not done in our country, giving the younger before the firstborn. 
complete this week of this one, and we will give you the other, also in return for serving me for another seven years. Jacob did so and completed her week. Then Laban gave him his daughter Rachel as a wife. This is the word of the Lord. So we are in uh, week three of four, walking through and with Jacob, learning about uh, Jacob's life, uh, the good parts, the bad parts, the, the places that we, we want to remember, the places we wanna, would like to forget, at least. And, and we find ourselves here in this place. We, we've journeyed with, uh, with Jacob from birth as he, he kind of had this feud with his brother Esau and then eventually kind of gets the better of his brother Esau, but has to run for his life because Esau was the bigger, stronger, and ready to kill brother. Uh, and then we met him last week as he fell asleep in the wilderness, fell asleep with his head on a rock. I asked for a challenge of those who would be willing to sleep on a rock this week to try to have one of these kind of dreams. Anybody take me up on that? Yeah. Okay, yeah, you did, okay, good, good. We'll talk later. Uh, I want to see what kind of dreams, if any, you had. Uh, I wouldn't get any sleep that way. Painful, Painful dreams, yeah, yeah. Uh, so we, we saw last week that, that Jacob has this encounter with God in the wilderness, and then he, he responds to God's uh, appearing in a dream by declaring that, that if you do the things you'll, you've promised me, God, then I will call you my God, not just a God, but my God. I will claim you as you have claimed me. So here we find Jacob, and he's, he's furthered his journey through the wilderness, and he's arrived at his destination, the place that his mom and his dad sent him to go find a wife. And he, he arrives in this place, and he arrives in Laban's land. He arrives in Laban's land, and then is led to Laban, and then we catch him right there after he's been there about a week or so. Uh, and about a month, a week to a month or so, and Laban has this conversation with him that says, hey, you shouldn't be working for me for nothing, right? You're, you're one of my, you're my family. Let me, let me pay you a wage, and that's where we find things. And so the, the challenge for, for Jacob here in finding Laban, and things seem to be going real smooth up to this point, and then they get a little rocky. Uh, the rocks return, right? Not just, they're not just to sleep on, they're also for relationships. Uh, so Jacob finds in Laban a match. And not the kind of like matchmaker, matchmaker, make me a match. We're talking when you've met your match. Have you ever had that person that you just kind of rubbed the wrong way against? Uh, and maybe they, they, they just knew all the right buttons to push. And even though, <laughs> even though... <laughs> You, you're, you really might like the person and you might get along fairly well, but there's just every once in a while, there's these times when you butt heads and you compete against each other. Um, maybe for a lot of us, this, this might be a sibling. Uh, this might be a peer. This might be some other kind of family relationship. But Jacob and Laban have this back and forth. And if you're up for the reading, if you want, like, if you're missing your soaps during the week because you're at work or whatever, if you want a really good read that's kind of juicy and interesting, if not sad, uh, read through Genesis, the rest of Genesis 29 to 31, and you'll find just this really weird story of these two grown men competing with each other to try to outdo one, each, one another, but not just to outdo one another, but to outdo the other by doing wrong for the other. By, by trying to put them at a handicap in order to, for your own self to get ahead. So if you want, that's some good, interesting reading, uh, and then we can have a conversation about what does this mean um, uh, later down the road. And so we see in this story, in Jacob and Laban, we see all of these things, and we see how God's promises, the promises that God made to Jacob, are fulfilled to Jacob, in spite of all of the relationship stickiness, messiness, rockiness, all that goes on that isn't what we would call necessarily good, God is still able to fulfill the promises that were made. And we also learn as we follow Jacob through this story and, and our scripture today, but even more, Jacob's whole story that 
that God's promises aren't instantly kept, aren't instantly made, that Jacob here must wait. Did you catch anybody a math whiz? Did you catch how long he had to wait? Seven years and then another seven years, right, on top of that. So 14 and then some at the beginning uh, to, to kind of get what he wanted, what he came for, uh, which was a spouse. He, he, he has to wait 14 years. 14 years, that's a long time to wait. Can anybody wind back the clock to 2003? Okay. Imagine starting to wait for something that in 2003, in August, that you're just now about to get. It's a long time to wait for God's promises. For the things that you're waiting for, I'm not a patient person. Uh, the thing that helps me wait more than anything these days is this, this little thing. I pull it out of my pocket whenever I have to wait. Uh, in line at the grocery store is, is probably where you'll, you'll see me use it the most when I'm waiting because I just feel like things could go so much faster if they would just do everything my way. And, and, and I could get everyone through HEB faster if we just do it in a way that makes sense that's faster. And so in order to distract me from that, I pull out the phone and I check uh, what's going on in the world and, and who's sent me text messages or called me or, or what's going on with, with posting on Facebook, Twitter, and all that Instagram and stuff so that I get distracted from the time that I have to wait for the extra. If I, if I stood in line 14 minutes and waited, I would be reaching the end of my ability to wait. 14 years. 14 years to wait. What's up? It will be there when I get there. I need to adopt that attitude. I'll try to remember that. I'll try to remember that. But it's not going to be that easy. Right, right. If you get there, but you're still waiting. Yeah, yeah. Well, once you get there, yeah, you realize that, uh, that you're still waiting, right? I still haven't found what I'm looking for, right? Uh, I think that was a wise, wise person once said that, right? Um, but uh, I'd like to, if I can, pull the curtain back a little bit today, to pull the curtain back a little bit and let you know that the story that we read today, the scripture we read today, causes problems for people like me, causes problems for preachers because it is so hard to find good news in the scripture we read today, and it's so hard to find good news sometimes in, in the stories of Jacob because Jacob is just that, what, like we talked about, he's not necessarily a villain and he's not really a good guy. At certain times he does the right thing, but then even in the midst of doing the right thing, he, he still kind of does it his own way, his Jacob way. Like last week when, when he has that encounter with God, he says, God says, I'm going to do all these things for you. And Jacob says, that's great. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to remember this by erecting a, a kind of an altar for you and remembering this day that you appeared to me. Oh, but by the way, if you do all this and only if you do all this, then you will be my God, right? And so Jacob kind of does the right thing, but even he can't help himself. So if I can, I'd like to pull the curtain back uh, today and let you know uh, that this is a hard passage for me. Uh, this is a hard scripture for me to read and to try to preach some kind of good news um, some kind of good news today out of this scripture. I asked a, a pastor friend as I was wrestling with this uh, scripture this week, I said, uh, it, it's interesting. I, I, I like the story. It's intriguing. It's like a soap opera. But uh, where's the good news in this soap opera? Where is God in all of this? Where, where's God active? And what's God doing? And my preacher friend's response is, God is crying. And I thought, well, that's not good news, right? Uh, I can't go with that if I'm trying to bring good news um, and if I'm trying to be true to what the gospel is, which is good news for, for those who are in need of it. And I think we're all in need of good news each and every day. So if I'm being honest with you, I would have liked to skip over this passage it came up in the lectionary, which, which I don't know if you're aware of the lectionary, but there's a schedule that, that rotates uh, through three years, and you kind of cover a good portion of, of the whole Bible. If you go through this lectionary, uh, you'll go through a good portion of it. And it gives you four or five scripture options. And I chose to follow the story of Jacob 
And when I picked it out, I knew that this week was going to come, but I knew that I had time to get ready for it. So I didn't think about it, and I tried to kind of pretend like it wasn't going to happen and not really confront the hard that it was. And, and so then this week came, and, and, it, and I had to be forced to sit down with it. Um, but I searched this week, and I searched and I searched to find good news in it, and I, I still struggled the whole time. And so I wanted to skip it over and to pick something else from Jacob's stories. There's so many other places where I can easily find some good news to pull out to share with you. But in the end, I decided to stay with it. And I did that for two reasons, because one, I thought it was kind of the easy way out if I did that. And then two, I can choose to ignore this passage and passages like it, but they don't go away. The passages don't go away by ignoring them. They're still there. And so sometimes it's better if we just go ahead and rip that Band-Aid off, right? What's up? If um, prevention. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is better found than cured. Right. I mean, but, Absolutely. But we are looking too hard to find it. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. There's always good news, but, but sometimes we have to look hard, and sometimes we do look too hard for the good news. Uh, and sometimes we just have to admit Sorry. that this passage, you're okay, that this passage is, is hard. It's okay to admit that this is a tough, tough passage. In my first full-time ministry uh, job out of college, I made a t-shirt that I now regret and have for the last few years. I regret making this t-shirt. And I I wish I had a a picture of it. I've long since lost the t-shirt. I actually thought the t-shirt looked cool, but was a little bit off. Um, The back of the uh, t-shirt, it was was for a youth group that I was working with at the time. The back of the t-shirt had a a cartoonish character uh, holding a thumbs up, and it was kind of like the thumb was coming at you, so the thumb was really big. And then above it, it just said, life is good. And then at the bottom, it said, Romans 8, 28. Now, Romans 8, 28 is one of my favorite passages. It's one of my favorite scriptures. But I, I regret making the, the shirt. Um, I don't regret making the shirt because I don't think life is good. I do think life is good. Uh, I enjoy living. I, I want to keep living. I want to keep enjoying the things that God has to, to give in this life. Uh, and I want to keep sharing life with others and, and, and continuing to look for that good news and to share that good news. But I regret making the t-shirt because it's an oversimplification. It's an oversimplification of life and of that scripture. Because if you look through all of Romans... There's this arc in Romans, and to hit one point, and to grab that one point and pull it out, it, it, does what it, it does when you pull something out, it pulls it out of context. And you miss that all of this other stuff that Paul is talking about in Romans, and all of the, the hardship that there is in following Jesus, and focuses on, on, on the, the little reward that sometimes we're not patient enough to wait for. It's an oversimplification of the scripture because it doesn't acknowledge that life isn't always good. Paul knew that. Paul would find that out, and he would know it in throughout his life. Others as well. Life isn't always good. Life is, is hard. Life is difficult. Relationships get strained. People do things they shouldn't do to other people, and life isn't always good, at least not at that moment. There are some moments that just plain stink. There are some situations that are just difficult. And it's okay to say, this stinks. That this is difficult. When I walk in to visit with a family that's just lost a loved one, I don't say, life is good. But there is good news. Even though right now you may be hurting, there is good news. 
scriptures like the one we read today, although they're difficult, I think they have something to offer, uh, something to teach us, precisely because they are real. These are real people. Sometimes when we read about things in here, they seem far off and away, and they're holier people than, than I could ever hope to be. But these are real people. And sometimes the events of life leave them raw. Just like we have events in our lives that leave us raw because it's real life. And it's good, but it's also, it's also hard. We live in a world that can be so real that it leaves us raw. We live in a world where relationships get strained and broken off, where people leave each other because they have a disagreement. A disagreement over inheritance, over money, whatever it is. Where people hurt each other. Sometimes family relationships look more like Jacob's relationship with his brother, with his father, with Laban. Sometimes they look even worse. And many times they look better. Scriptures like this are real. While my use of Romans 8.28 was well-intentioned, it does not leave room to acknowledge that often God must work to bring good out of human activity that is anything but good. That's what Jacob's whole story is about. Jacob's entire story can be summed up by talking and saying that God is able to use even Jacob. And not only is God able to use, but God chooses to use even Jacob to bring about a people that are capable of blessing all people. God chooses to use those who may not seem worthy. I don't know about you, but that's good news for me. <clears throat> the realness of this scripture stands for me. It stands as a testament that even when God seems absent. <clears throat> did you notice that? That God was completely not in the scene today. God's not mentioned in the scripture today. It's not even hinted at. It's all about the interaction between Jacob and Laban, this deception that occurs, taking advantage of. God's not even mentioned. The scripture and others like it stand as a testament that, that even when God seems completely absent, God is still working and God is still able to use whatever the mess it is that humanity makes to bring about something good. Yesterday, we went up to my parents' place um, in, in Pflugerville, and uh, it was great that, uh, that Josiah and his cousins got to play, and having three little ones under four uh, in the same house is, is a joyous thing and keeps all of the adults in the, in the area on their toes. At one point, my nephew, who's, who's about three and a half, uh, he and my niece, who's a little over one, got away and they went and they know where to find the toys in grandma and grandpa's house. And they got, out, got away by themselves. We were all visiting. And at some point, I walk back to check and see how the kids are doing. And I walk into the room where the toys are kept in the closet and the toys are strewn everywhere in the room. So you know what I did? I turned around and I walked away. <laughs> I thought, I don't want to deal with this mess. 
I don't want to figure out which bin each of these is supposed to go in because I don't know where they came from and I don't want to have to try to reason with the three-year-old. So I turned around and I left the mess. Well, I think my sister cleaned it up, yeah, because she's, she's, <laughs> she's used to dealing with the three-year-old. I left the mess. I turned away, and I didn't enter into that room. God moves into the mess humanity has made. God moves in to this mess. That's what Jacob's story last week when he falls asleep and he has the dream and he wakes up and he says, God is here and I didn't even realize it. And that's what the story of Emmanuel is about. God with us. God moves into the mess that humanity has made. and brings us back home to a place where we have been promised to an inheritance that we have been told belongs to us because we are sons and daughters. But sometimes, like Jacob, we have to wait. We have to wait, and we have to wait through the mess. We have to wait through the relationships that that we take part in that sometimes we damage and we have to wait for the moment that God reveals God's self to us so that we can know that God is present and active in this place even though I wasn't aware searched and searched for good news in this passage. I don't know that I found it, but I found something that makes me a little bit, feel a little bit better about the mess that I cause and the fact that God isn't like me and doesn't turn around and leave the mess. That is good news. Would you pray with me? Amazing God, we give you thanks for this day that you have created. We give you thanks for the air in our lungs. We give you thanks for the words of these songs, of these prayers, to express how it is we feel about you and about the fact that you do not leave us alone. God, in this week, we ask that you would be with us that you would make yourself known even when we are completely unaware, even when we are in the middle of making a giant mess, that you would make yourself known, move into our mess, and to bring something good out of it. Amen. So, God works through Jacob and promises Jacob and, and before him he promises Isaac and before Isaac he promised Abraham that I will bless you in order that you may bless others. Yesterday, Pastor Gerald received a, a phone call uh, from one of our members about a young man who for various reasons is having to move out of his home. He's 17 years old. Mom uh, has, has had boyfriend move in and things aren't good at home. And he needs a home. Pastor Gerald had a conversation with the young man and he said, uh, Gerald asked him and, and said, I need to know that you're not being kicked out of home because you did something wrong, because you're on drugs or, or having problems with alcohol or whatever it is. I need to know that. And, and the young man said, no, I work two jobs and I'm saving up so that when I'm 18, I can have a place of my own. But right now, I'm not allowed to have an apartment because I'm not eight, yet 18. So this young man needs a place to call home. He needs a place to lay his head. And Pastor Gerald said he and I would talk to this community today to ask you 
to think, to pray, and to feel. If there's some place that you can offer, a place for a young man to lay his head. so that he too might know the good news that even in the midst of broken relationships and in the midst of the mess that's caused, when humans do human things, that God is still at work to bring goodness. And so if, if you feel like that's something that you can offer this young man, his name's Destin, uh, if, if you feel that that this is something you can offer. I invite you to get in touch with me uh, or to get in touch with Pastor Gerald. There are bulletins in the back. Our, our emails are listed on the back. Uh, Gerald said he would follow up the young man by the end of today. And so uh, if you're going out to lunch, maybe talk about it, pray about it, think about it. Uh, if there's a, a, an extra room or, or a, a, a garage apartment that you have vacant or someplace, um, please get in touch with, with one of us and let us know. Um, hopefully, uh, we will have a flood of emails and phone calls. Uh, and so just by saying we're willing doesn't necessarily mean that we'll need you, but you were willing. That being said, I'd like to ask you to, to enter into a time of prayer with me, um, and, and I'm going to ask for your participation in this time, either through a uh, silent word spoken only to you or through, through vocalized and verbalized words. Uh, I'm going to invite us to pray for a particular group of people, and then I will give some, some silence from this end to allow you to speak, either, either vocalize it or keep it, uh, keep it in. Let's go to God in prayer. Amazing God, loving God, we thank you that you are a God who is with us. Always and everywhere, you are with your creation. Lord, this day we lift up all those who are sick and all those who are hurting, who we name now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, we lift up those who are in need of healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift to you those who are serving overseas and in our military. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And God, we pray for the church, your church, for its leaders, for its mission, and for all who call Jesus Lord to continue to seek, to follow after our Lord. Lord, we give you thanks for those who have shown us the way. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And God, today I give you thanks for this church, for this gathered community, for the work that they do in their everyday lives, for the ways that they witness to your love, for the ways that they point people to the great hope that we have in Jesus Christ, our Lord. We give you thanks for those who volunteered this week with Vacation Bible School, those who were able to contribute in a way even though they were not present, and also for all those children that came to learn the ways in which you are asking them to be your people on earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. We're going to continue to have some time of prayer and reflection as we, as we sing uh, more and praise more. 
If you want, you can make your way over and fill out a, a prayer request card. Or if you feel uh, today that you would like to, to take one of those prayer cards home and spend the week praying for it, and then maybe bring it back next week and allow someone else to pray for that uh, concern. Um, uh, do you know if you filled them out? I don't think I said this the last couple of weeks. If you filled them out, if it's not something you're comfortable sharing your name behind or around, um, just leave it anonymous. Um, or if you would like your, your name be lifted or the other name be lifted, uh, do so. But this time is, is for you uh, to spend in prayer and reflection and in praise. My hope is built on nothing less Than Jesus' blood and righteousness I dare not trust the sweetest frame But wholly trust in Jesus' name Christ alone cornerstone weak made strong in the Savior's love through the storm he is Lord Lord of all when darkness seems to hide his face I rest on His unchanging grace In every high and stormy gale My anchor holds within the veil My anchor holds within the veil Christ alone Cornerstone, weak made strong In the Savior's love Through the storm He is Lord, Lord of all He is Lord, Lord of all In the Savior's love, through the storm, He is Lord, Lord of all. When He shall come in trumpet sound, Oh, may I then in Him be found Dressed in His righteousness alone Faultless to stand before the throne Christ alone, cornerstone Weak made strong in the Savior's love Through the storm He is Lord, Lord of all it, but there's a chance to ne next year to be at Vacation Bible School uh, to learn about Jesus in this place with, with some really cool people. But if you did miss it, you didn't completely miss it, 
I'd like to, to invite you to, to watch a, a quick little video that, that shows some of uh, what went on this week. Uh, it doesn't capture everything, but it gives you at least a snippet. had a great time this year, um, and, uh, and, and we're going to have a great time next year, and we hope that you will mark your calendars and, and prepare to, to be part of what God is doing in this place. Uh, there are many places that we can find that God is, is working in and through and with and for us uh, in, this, in this area, uh, and so uh, we hope that, that you'll spend this week and this time um, learning where God is active and the ways that God is able to use the church to bring about good, even when things don't seem too good. And so uh, we go as a people with a song on our lips, and so let us sing one more song. Yeah. 
sorrows lamb of God by his own betrayed the sin of men and wrath of God has been on Jesus laid silent as he stood accused beaten mocked and scorned bowing to the father's will he took a crown of thorns on that road Get across my salvation where your love poured out over me. Now my soul cries out, Hallelujah! Praise and honor unto thee. Send of heaven God's own Son to purchase and redeem then reconcile the very ones who nailed him to that tree on that rugged cross my salvation where your love poured out over me now my soul cries out hallelujah praise and honor unto thee now my debt is paid it is paid in full by the precious blood that my Jesus spilled. Now the curse of sin has no hold on me. Whom the Son sets free, oh, is free indeed. Now my debt is paid, it is paid in full. By the precious blood that my Jesus spilled, now the curse of sin has no hold on me. Whom the Son sets free, oh, it's free indeed. On that rugged cross, my salvation, where you love. and honor unto Thee. See, the stone is rolled away. Behold the empty tomb. Hallelujah, God be praised. He's risen. From the grave on that rugged cross, my salvation, where your love poured out over me. Now my soul cries out, Hallelujah, praise and honor. All praise and honor unto Thee. Thank you, everyone, for coming. If you'd help us with the chairs, we'd appreciate it. Go in peace.